Hey guys, it's Mountain Walk, and today we've got another sweet pre-modern deck tech, this time on the very recently unbanned Show and Tell. Uh, so we're going to be working with a sneak and show uh, sort of uh, deck today. So we got uh, Red Splash, or a little bit more of a commitment to red for sneak attack, which is very sweet. Uh, so yeah, lots of, lots of really cool stuff. Um, but let's just go ahead and get into it. All right, so uh, I did come up with this idea all by myself, or at least one of the uh, main cards um, I had uh, rediscovered. Uh, definitely a card I was a big fan of when I was a kid, when I was just started to play Magic. Um, so that's pretty fun, pretty sweet, pretty nostalgic. Um, and, and that came from like, okay, like, uh, how am I going to solve the aggro matchup? These decks can get out of hand very quickly. Um, and we need something to to be able to um, a creature or an enchantment or something like that that'll beat them up, right? How are we going to do that? How are we going to do that? Um, and so I was definitely brainstorming all sorts of different kinds of cards, like certain um, payoffs are better than like others versus like certain decks, you know. So um, it's very tricky, very tricky. So there's a lot of moving parts. Um, and there's a lot of different hate cards to deal with, and so we'll get to that in a bit. But let's uh, take a look at the deck. This is, of course, just a rough draft, but I've been tinkering with it, and, and I'm pretty happy with it. Um, it would be nice to, to start jamming some games with this at some point, uh, but I have so many different decks I want to build and play and stuff. So, you know, one thing at a time, one thing at a time. All right, so uh, we got some sweet tech. Uh, we got Ashen Fire Beast, which is our big, big Bomba, big Bomba versus aggro decks. And uh, we'll get to all of the payoffs in a second, um, but let's just talk a little bit uh, about the the numbers of show and tell and sneak attack. Um, you actually have seven show and tell with Burning Wish, of course. So there's a, um, more one of those in the sideboard. Uh, two sneak attacks, since more emphasis on show and tell. Uh, then, of course, we have all the card drawing and stuff, so uh, Careful Study is a pretty good one on turn one, uh, as is Portent, and these will help you set up your draws, filter away cards, uh, so you can go uh, and get your Show and Tell plus Fatty, um, or I guess even Sneak Attack plus Fatty or whatever. Although, obviously, uh, certainly that's less good in this kind of build. Um, again, no Gristle Brand or Emrakul certainly makes uh, Sneak Attack much worse, but it is still uh, somewhat useful um, as a, just an additional uh, uh, cheating, cheaty, sneaky card. Um, but we can also build around that a little bit more, but we'll get to that in just, well, a little bit as well. Uh, three main deck Duress, I could certainly see playing four. Uh, Duress is very important against all the hate cards and random stuff people will be putting into play off here your show and tell. Uh, the mana is, again, trying to uh, strike a balance between producing, well, basically all three colors. Sometimes you're going to need a lot of red, sometimes you're going to need black, sometimes you're going to need blue, um, all mixed up. So, And of course the Ancient Tombs and Sea of Triggers are a good ramp. And of course there's the neat interaction between like Croesus's Catacombs and like Gemstone Mine. You can reset your Gemstone Mines with Catacombs and stuff like that. So pretty neat stuff, pretty neat stuff. Um, but yeah, typical sort of mana base, again, if you're playing like a, you know, blue, black, red deck, you're going to need to produce all sorts of colors of mana, and then of course you also uh, have Ancient Tombs and City of Traders, so you need to, you know, you, lands need to be producing all sorts of different colors. It's just, it's just kind of a, kind of a mess, kind of a mess, but that's okay. That's okay, we're really fast, so all the uh, extra damage is uh, hopefully not going to mess with us too much, especially against like the control and combo decks, that won't matter. But being able to cast your spells versus them, like duresses and stuff, will matter. Um, sideboard, lots of really cool stuff. Uh, for example, like Hydra Blast. Sometimes this is just comes in against Red Blast. Oftentimes it's pretty good against the um, Red Aggro decks. That can be pretty important um, to your overall plan. So uh, those are good there. Um, Overmaster for forcing through your Show and Tells. Uh, Turbulent Dreams, of course, is our sorcery speed kind of bounce spell we can wish for. Um, Anarchy, of course, against white decks, uh, so like Oath, or the Parfait Oath decks, anything like that. Uh, Epicenter, uh, this is again against the slower uh, Durly decks, so you can 
show and tell in some fatty or something or show and tell in some payoff and then next turn epicenter uh and and you should be able to win pretty handily from there most of those mid-range slower decks are very mana intensive and uh, epicenter is quite um quite good against those sort of decks uh and oh i think i put i think that was supposed to be three defense grid on there three six nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen yeah that was supposed to be three defense grid on there my bad uh, but the numbers on here don't even really matter for the most part. Like I said, it's a, it's a work in progress, but defense grid, of course, being good against, um, the control decks against counter magic, things like that, or, or anytime someone wants to do tricky stuff in your turn. Um, but again, like there's so many different kinds of cards, like is three defense grid, three overmaster too much, plus the additional duress, who knows? Um, but it's, it's definitely something I consider and, Obviously, you don't want to dilute your deck down with too many answers, so keep that in mind um, when you're boarding and things like that. So, anyways, think of the sideboards more of a work in progress. Obviously, the things that are super set in stone be like Pyroclasm and Show and Tell and uh, the Duress, the Extra Duress, Fourth Duress should be somewhere in the deck. Um, things like that that are basically like, yeah, you always want a Burning Wish for your Show and Tell. You know, you want to have that uh, additional redundancy. Anyway, so let's talk about all this sweet tech. Okay, Ash and Fire Beast, like I said, look at this thing. This thing is sweet. This thing is super great versus weenie decks. Um, just a red and a colorless, and you can just kill, uh, deal one damage to every creature without flying. You can do it multiple times over multiple turns. Um, it's a big, big beater. Uh, you don't need to tap it to do this. Um, and uh, this thing is huge. Uh, I think it's actually an elemental beast, uh, and it's carrying away an elephant in the art, so that's sweet. Um, this card is very cool, very awesome. Uh, I'm a big fan of it. Uh, it definitely, well, it kills the heck out of things. Uh, and this is, is definitely your trump uh, versus a lot of aggro decks. Most of them aren't going to have a ton of uh, removal that can hit this, um, outside of maybe Edict or Plow for certain decks. So yeah, this is, this is going to be big, big game, big game, you know, getting this down versus like goblins or elves or like any of the black aggro decks, typically, um, stompy, things like that. Uh, this is, I mean, this is pretty impossible for them to beat most of the time. So yeah, definitely very sweet, very cool. Um, it's, it, <laughs> yeah. So th this thing, very sweet, great against the decks with like a bunch of mana dorks. I mean, anything with, with X ones in it, uh, is, is going to be having a bad day when the Ashen Fire Beast arrives. Ooh, boy, he's scary. Uh, next, we have a Chroma. Uh, this is just kind of like, I need another generic big thing to cheat in. Um, this thing is great versus, I don't know, basically everything that's not Diabolic Edict or Swords to Plowshares. Unfortunately, those cards are still very good, um, but it is good at uh, stopping any aggression, any attacking and blocking from basically any deck until they can like so like if you do this on turn one a chrome is going to be very hard to beat for a lot of decks um creature based decks just because like it's like a three turn clock four turn clock well it has haste so it's like a three turn clock four turn clock whatever math is hard six times four but the attack the first turn anyways um yeah it's got vigilance uh flying first strike trample haste uh, pro black pro red i guess are somewhat relevant but um yeah this thing is very sweet uh, pretty strong uh, versus the, the aggressive decks, just as a decent way to deal them a lot of damage, put on a clock, fast clock, um, and uh, stop them from really, really attacking. So kind of like a moat that attacks a little bit. And speaking of moats that attack a little bit, <laughs> Form of the Dragon. So this one is mostly against like control decks in general, although again, a lot of control decks are going to have seal of cleansing, so that even that's not like uh, a perfect answer, but uh, it is like a four turn, uh, five turn clock, I guess. It's five turns because it triggers at your upkeep. Um, but yeah, this card is uh, pretty sweet. It stops basically every single creature that doesn't fly. Um, I guess it can kill creatures generally, but uh, this is this is mostly just your big, um, hard to interact with enchantment against slow, dirtily decks. Um, that I only have a couple different answers to it. So this is very strong 
or pretty strong. Not lights out, of course, by any stretch of the imagination. Like I said, a lot of decks play main deck disenchants and sideboard cards for it. And of course, this card is vulnerable to Blue Elemental Blast, which is a pretty good card against your deck in general. So yeah, not perfect, but uh, pretty strong. And of course, Decree of Silence, which makes an excellent card to follow up. Like if you're playing another show and tell after your first one, this one will basically uh, should lock the game out completely just being able to counter their next uh three spells pretty powerful pretty powerful so like i said this one really focuses a lot more on the show and tell aspect that's why we have all these uh uh big enchantments right to, to put into play um but yeah so pretty sweet stuff here so also uh ash and fire beast time to buy all the foil ash and fire beasts you can find look this card's going to go up like crazy um ash and fire beast uh, next spec target, this is financial advice. Buy, buy, buy. Buy low, also buy high, also buy every copy you can find. Uh, I already have 3 million Ash and Fire Beasts, and I'm, I'm basically the greatest mage of all time. The greatest red mage of all time. I'm carrying an elephant right now, actually. So yeah, there you go. There are a lot of different options. Uh, there's so many different options for this deck. Again, some things are pretty set in stone, like the Intuitions, uh, the Portent, obviously the Show and Tell Sneak Attack, Burning Wish stuff. Um, I think Duress is really, really important too. Like, for example, if, you, if you're like, oh, I don't know what my opponent's playing, and I have a Form of the Dragon or Ash and Fire Beast in hand, you can Duress, see what's going on, uh, and then, you know, when you Show and Tell, you can put in the appropriate card. Um, or, and or you can take whatever... Uh, hate card they were going to put in the play which is pretty nice too and so i think a, a greater focus on the show and tell part is, is typically better um sneak attack really requires one real big thing to kind of one shot your opponent for it to be that good now we do have a, a card for that um but uh, we'll get to that in just a sec um and like i said the wishboard sideboard there's some stuff that's sort of set in stone that you want some numbers of obviously like a like I said, the show and tell, uh, the pyroclasm, the turbulent dreams, um, and the, obviously, yeah, the fourth duress somewhere in the uh, 75. Those are important. I think something like epicenter is, is really important just to be able to deal with uh, those more slower, more mana hungry decks that can like eventually like do stuff that uh, will could disrupt you, but they need a lot of mana to do it, and they're very slow. So Epicenter is a, quite a good trump against those decks. So, uh, But there's still a lot of wiggle room there. Um, and there's all sorts of nasty hate cards uh, to deal with. And your opponent gets to put them into play for free with Show and Tell. Again, Humility being a big one just that just stomps all of your stuff. Um, so that's pretty obnoxious. Um, obviously, you know, you can play with something like Phantom Shoba. That's pretty good against um, Humility. Uh, pretty sweet. Uh, but it is worse versus... Um, like aggressive decks uh so that's not great because obviously like you get a phantom to show but they get stuff too so that's unfortunate um so there's a lot a lot like it, it's 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 sort of better versus like the hate card but you don't really want the against the um against the white decks in general because it can still be plowed and i don't know it, it there, there's a lot of moving parts and the way that the games flow back and forth between each player are going to be different too. And like what sideboard cards they have and, um, you know, getting hit by splash hate and, and things like that. So a lot, it's a little overwhelming. There's a lot to really sort of figure out trying to metagame against all sorts of different decks, but that's okay. We got, we got a pretty good lineup of, of uh, fatties uh, that basically deals with pretty much everything. Um, we just might need to show and tell twice <laughs> to really lock everything up which is okay which is okay we have quite a few show and tells quite a few draw cards um and intuition to two to four whatever cards we want so there you go all right like i said let's talk a little bit about some of these different options now first off we can do um some really cool stuff with uh, uh some dragon stuff right so a uh, blade wing the risen is actually pretty sweet uh because with other additional dragons say something like dragon mage 
um, or even something like Dragon Tyrant, although Dragon Tyrant's mostly just a sneak attack card because <laughs> of the upkeep. Um, although, again, that would be something to consider as well, but a, a dragon deck, right, with sneak attack, that'd be sweet. Anyways, um, ooh, yeah, like mono red dragons. Yeah. All right, well, anyways, let's stay on topic. Blade Wind Arisen, very good with uh, careful study and uh, intuition, um, being able to put a bunch of cards in your in your graveyard. Um, so putting like a dragon in this and a dragon in your graveyard and then show and tell blade ring and then you get another dragon. So it's like, okay, that's good versus swords. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, Nicol Bolas is another one that, again, is coincidentally a dragon, although it's more of a, it's kind of a standalone card. This card is very, very good with sneak attack, where it just deals some seven damage and mind twists them. Um, which is very strong and because you are a blue black and red deck you can pay the upkeep so like it, although again be careful if you show a tell it on turn one you're not going to have the mana to pay um the upkeep on this guy so again that's kind of an issue but uh, it's mostly verse um uh, uh nickel bolts is mostly better versus the uh, slower decks so waiting until you have like three man to pay for the upkeep is, is is fine so you don't really have to go turbo against those decks um although you are sort of incentivized to um just to dodge uh counter magic and things like that um against those uh control decks and stuff uh multani is quite good again this is some of these cards are reanimator cards right that have seen play um and multani is one that's very good against uh, swords to plowshares and all sorts of random targeted removal and stuff like that. So that's that's a card that's that's uh, could be played. Um, of course, Raya Dongbringer is a little bit similar to Blade Wing the Risen. Um, you know, if you can dump some stuff in your graveyard, uh, and then Raya will give you uh, some more stuff, more stuff. So that's pretty cool. Um, it's pretty good if you're playing like Reanimate and Exhum and stuff in your sideboard, so you can intuition for all sorts of different things and um, do all sorts of cool stuff that way. So yeah, that's certainly something worth exploring. Uh, Sarah Avatar, this is the big one with sneak attack. Obviously you can one shot your opponent um, sometimes. Uh, you can definitely, I mean, this one will require a lot more testing, especially because like, um, because you play Ancient Tomb and uh, City of Brass, like it's not gonna be 20 power uh, Sarah Avatar to like immediately one shot your opponent. It might be like a 15-15, which will, get him down to like two life or something, but that's not dead. And that means you also need another follow-up um, to with, with, with sneak attack and or show and tell. So kind of awkward there. It also doesn't have any evasion, um, but it is pretty sweet. Uh, and it it is, an, it is an option. It is an option. Like turn one, show and tell, say we're avatar, you have like an 18, 18, like that's pretty good. And maybe that's just good enough versus everything. Um, again, that requires testing, uh, but it is something to uh, take into consideration. Uh, so yeah, Sarah Avatar, very sweet. Uh, Butcher Org, I think, is just generally worse than uh, Fire Beast, just because, you know, it can't attack. Uh, if it can attack, like, due to a Staring Bridge or something, um, that's going to be super duper awkward, uh, and it's just going to be a vanilla 6-6, six, six, so that's not, not super great. Um, but yeah, there, there's tons of different options. You can put stuff into play uh, off the show and tell. Um, and there's probably some enchantments or I think enchantments or artifacts that I missed. Hell, maybe even some creatures. So anyways, uh, definitely some really cool stuff here. Really cool options. Uh, so this hopefully gets your, your, your juices flowing and gets you thinking about stuff. And speaking of uh, reanimate and exhum, because we are splashing black and have a decent number of black sources, uh, these as burning wish targets in the sideboard, pretty good. Um, you know, I guess if they play stuff that makes us like say Diabolic Edict or Wrath of God or whatever, um, reanimate can bring those back into play. Or if they're uh, put in the graveyard from careful study or intuition, of course, same thing, same thing. So yeah, these are, are pretty powerful giving you a little bit of a different angle of attack, a little bit more redundancy, um, you know, so that's that's pretty sweet. I'm a big fan of that. So reanimate and exhume, definitely uh, options to consider. Um, recoup and relearn are kind of like the same thing, uh, just giving you the ability to flashback, say, like duress, um, or return it to your hand in relearn's case, 
uh, as well as uh, show and tell, of course, being another one, <laughs> you know, so that's pretty, pretty good, pretty important. Uh, so those, again, probably deserve one or the other, deserve a slot in the sideboard. Obviously, relearn just being the easier card to cast because you're more blue heavy than red heavy and your red's kind of taxed by ash and fire beast and stuff like that. But um, yeah, lots of lots of interesting stuff here. Um, and of course, last rights last rights so yeah uh this is again just a card to again it's, it's good if you uh have more of those graveyard synergy stuff with reanimate and exhume but discarding a bunch of stuff from your hand um stripping your opponent's hand and then like reanimating uh a fatty or something is pretty strong pretty strong so again another um possibly main deck card uh or, or um, as i should say a sideboard card you could put in the main deck after after boarding um but also a decent wish target as well so yeah um again you really need to think of this as a 75 especially with like all the really good burning wish targets and all the different tutors and things like that so yeah a lot of stuff going on oh boy it, it makes my head hurt makes my head hurt all right and we're done and we're done we've we finally got through all of it there's just so much uh, to talk about and to learn, and there's just so much, um, so many different options, so many different pieces of tech and, and things like that that would make this deck good and interesting and, and powerful. And, you know, so uh, definitely um, a deck to keep your eye on. Um, but man, really, really tough, really tough. This isn't uh, like the Legacy Sneak and Show deck, that's for sure. You know, it's gonna be a lot more uh, deck building considerations and we don't have like free counter magic and stuff like that to to make everything super easy but that's okay that's okay so yeah so thanks for stopping by guys thanks for sticking with me all 20 something minutes so much talking so much stuff to think about so i hope you enjoyed this thanks for stopping by and have a great day